I'm G and I'm Hannah. Welcome to our video on the chemical synapse and transmission. We will be covering the neuromuscular junction, triggers and how the neurotransmitter is cleared. A neurotransmitter is a chemical present in the presynaptic terminals. After a neurotransmitter is rapidly removed from the synapse, it is synthesised and stored. It is released in response to a stimulation and is able to interact with specific postsynaptic receptors to create a response such as movement. After the transmitter action, neurotransmitters are ready to be removed. The types of neurotransmitters can be divided into two groups, amino acids and amines and peptides. Amino acids and amines are small molecules and they are stored and released from synaptic vesicles. They combine with both ligand-gated receptors and GPCRs. In contrast, peptides are large molecules which are stored in secretory granules and they only activate with GPCRs. Now we're going to talk about the neuromuscular junction using the example of my arm. The neuromuscular junction is an example of the synapse that is between a motor neuron and skeletal muscle fibre. We need these for contraction of muscles in everyday movement and to prevent muscle atrophy, which is the loss of muscle mass as a result of lack of movement or disease. The neuromuscular junction is the site where neurotransmitter was first studied, so we have a lot of knowledge on the research on how it works. The key features of the neuromuscular junction are its large number of active zones where neurotransmitters are released and its junctional folds at the postsynaptic site, which are densely filled with neurotransmitter receptors. These are both important for a signal to reach threshold and to be passed along to create a movement in the muscle as quickly as possible. Muscle cells sit adjacent to the axon terminal and have folds in them, which increase surface area so more sodium channels and calcium channels can fit there. When there is an influx of sodium and calcium in the axon terminal, calcium binds to acetylcholine vesicles. Acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter in the case of the neuromuscular junction. Proteins in the presynaptic neuron grab onto calcium and take it to the membrane, along with the acetylcholine vesicle the calcium is attached to. This means the vesicle fuses with the membrane and acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft. Receptors on the postsynaptic cleft are called nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. When acetylcholine binds to these, sodium channels open, so a sodium influx occurs. This leads to voltage-gated calcium release. The sarcoplasmic reptilian contains calcium which is released when calcium binds to its receptors, so even more calcium is released. This is called calcium-induced calcium release. There are gap junctions between each muscle cell, meaning cations can flow from one muscle cell to another, so one muscle cell contraction leads to more muscle cell contractions. This causes whole muscles to be able to move in a process called syncytium. The synaptic vesicles are synthesized in the soma and are filled at the presynaptic terminal. Acetylcholine is synthesized in the neuron by the enzyme choline acetyltransferase from choline and acetyl coenzyme A. ATP is required to load acetylcholine into the synaptic vesicles. Following the synthesis, the neurotransmitter acetylcholine travels to a vesicle where a transporter protein actively pumps the choline into the vesicle. Acetylcholine is stored until the neurotransmitter needs to be released. After acetylcholine is packaged into vesicles, it is stored at the nerve ending until an action potential arrives and allows for its release into the synaptic cleft. Now, on to the triggering of neurotransmitter release. The action potential that reaches the presynaptic terminal causes the opening of voltage-gated calcium channels. Calcium ions then diffuses down its electrochemical concentration gradient into the terminal from the surrounding areas. This influx of calcium ions triggers vesicles to fuse to the surface membrane of the presynaptic terminal in a process known as exocytosis. After the vesicle fuses to the surface membrane, the neurotransmitter is able to be released into the synaptic cleft. There is a big issue caused by the release of neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft because this can mean that there is excessive firing of the neurons. To overcome this, there are three mechanisms that can be used to clear the neurotransmitter from the synaptic cleft. The first of these is diffusion out of the synaptic cleft and this may be to neighbouring cells which can break down the neurotransmitter. The second way is the reuptake of neurotransmitter back up into the presynaptic membrane, which is carried out by specific transporters. The last method of clearance is just enzymes cleaving the neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft. 
In this case, acetylcholine esterase promotes the breakdown of acetylcholine to choline and acetyl coenzyme A. However, sometimes the clearance can be a combination of the last two. Enzymes can cleave the neurotransmitter in the synaptic cleft and then be reuptaked and recycled. Thank you for watching our video. We hope you found it informative and a good source for a revision. Bye! Bye.